Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to look at our favorite lol cow, Harmon Smith, try and defend some of Nintendo's most hated games, because despite the fact that most people I know love Nintendo's games, Harmon says that they are all hated when they are, 99% of the time, not hated. I know, shocker. Anyways, let's dive right into it. The gaming industry's attempts at downplaying The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is never going to work. And who exactly are these people downplaying Tears of the Kingdom, Cody? You still haven't answered that question all these times I've asked. I have gone to great lengths over the past decade to emphasize that a lot of the highly criticized, highly panned, you know, the hated Nintendo exclusives of the Esther year, stuff like the original Pikmin and the original U Luigi's Mansion, stuff like... Uh, Beautiful Joe, or Legend, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, or even something like Star Fox Zero. Okay, first thing, Beautiful Joe is not a Nintendo game, it is a Capcom game. It's on some Nintendo consoles, yes, but that doesn't mean that Nintendo owns the IP. I just told you that in the last video I did on you, Cody. Second of all, of all those games that you listed, Star Fox Zero is the only one that is an objectively bad game, Harmon. It had a crappy control scheme layout, and it was just a remake of Star Fox 1 or Star Fox 64, of which we had gotten a remake of the latter game literally the year before Star Fox Zero came out. Why was Star Fox Zero even a thing? Right, like, I have gone to great lengths emphasizing how those games, the most hated Nintendo games ever made, have gone on to become, like, classics in their own right and are highly regarded among the community. Like, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword did 5 million units on Switch. You know, after... Just because a game sells well, Cody, doesn't mean that the game is good. Funny how you seem to enjoy chopping and changing to suit your narrative, huh? After a decade-long hate campaign, trying to pretend that, like, the, the game killed the series or something. Evidence, please. Right? It is remarkable how over the past decade, Skyward Sword has kindled a dedicated following of people who really love and appreciate the game for what it is. In spite of the insane, conspiratorial, neo gaff led nonsense... Funny how you say that there's this massive hate campaign against The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, because I've been looking on Google, most people I see say that they love the game. So next point, please. I'm not gonna say that the game doesn't have its haters at all, but what game doesn't? Anyways, Harmon, the sad fact is, most people don't hate the game, you're just being paranoid. That... This is so, that, that this game was disappointing, that it couldn't compete with other games that came out around the same time period, that, like, it killed the franchise, right? Like, people may, like, half-heartedly try to say that, like, you know, Wind Waker was bad, or that, like, uh, you know, the, uh, the N64 had no games, but... The reason the Nintendo 64 didn't have that many games is because the PlayStation 1 came out a year or two earlier, and since Nintendo was sticking with the more expensive cartridges, instead of going with the cheaper CD-ROM format that the PlayStation would go on to popularize, it means that a lot of third-party companies left Nintendo for PlayStation. Since the Nintendo 64 didn't have that many RPGs, is why the head honchos of Nintendo tried to make Body Harvest an RPG, which is funny, because Shigeru Miyamoto hates RPGs, and he was the one who suggested it in the first place, or so I've heard. The Nintendo 64 only had about, what, seven or eight games that I would actually consider that are worth playing? They are... Super Mario 64, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, Quest 64, even though that game gets far more hatred than I honestly feel it deserves, even though it's still a really bad game. Paper Mario. Mario Parties 1, 2, and 3. And those are just the games that I can think of off the top of my head. The point is, without third-party support, your console flops. It's that simple. It's just a fact. And you and your fellow dick-riding Nintendrone fanboys and fangirls need to learn this and admit to it, Harmon, my guy. It's very evident, you know, seeing how enthusiastic people are for Nintendo Switch Online and uh, games like uh, the N64 service and everything that's been happening lately. I can tell you all right now, literally no one is excited for the Nintendo Switch Online stuff. Not even for those old-ass games. Because we don't like it when our old-ass games are tied to a subscription service, especially when we have alternate means of playing said old-ass games. 
Like, it cannot be more obvious that the commonly held narratives that Nintendo is pro-censorship or that Nintendo doesn't have third-party games or that, uh, you know, these... Nintendo IPs are stale, outdated, and can't compete with, with other franchises. Like, it cannot be more obvious that this is not true in the slightest, right? These games continue gaining new fans decades after the fact. It is remarkable seeing something like Donkey Kong Country, you know, a game that is almost 30 years old, still getting new fans to this day. I'm always seeing people playing Donkey Kong Country and discovering it for the first time and realizing that this is a top tier platformer. And I see you every day now making videos with more and more outrageous claims with literally no evidence to back them up, which you just proved my point with that last clip. It is more than just a game that was a technical showcase for the time, right? Donkey Kong Country is a masterpiece and is an excellent entry level title to get people into 2D platformers and showcase and why they are still viable. Donkey Kong Country is not an entry-level platformer, at least not to me. I think you meant to say Super Mario World, because in that instance, I would agree with you. Also, what does this have to do with people downplaying The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? And uh, going into like Super Mario Bros. Wonder release, I think a lot of people are going to be blindsided by just how popular and successful that game is because of the popularity of stuff like Donkey Kong Country, like the original Super Mario Bros. games, the new Super Mario Bros. games. Like, these games are a lot bigger and more successful than anyone can possibly understand. I think people are like greatly understating just how popular Super Mario Bros. Wonder is gonna be. Ah, that must mean that you're a psychic, Cody. Please give me tomorrow's winning lottery ticket numbers, if you don't mind. And what's more, what I also think needs to be acknowledged is that people don't understand that this also extends to the good games that have already come out right? Stuff like Super Mario Odyssey, stuff like ARMS, stuff like The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. These games are going to be talked about and played long, 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 long after the Game of the, War, uh, Game of the Year awards are given out. Like oh, you mean just like all the other good non-Nintendo games that you like to bash yet somehow still live rent-free in your head? Like the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, Baldur's Gate 3, Elden Ring, you know, actually good games? I honestly don't see Tears of the Kingdom winning Game of the Year, mostly due to the ungodly use of reused assets from Breath of the Wild, and I say that as I wear a Tears of the Kingdom t-shirt that I got for just one character. That, that's kind of the issue we're seeing right now, with people like trying to say that Starfield is going to win Game of the Year, or Baldur's Gate 3, or or a hi-fi rush or, or whatever, right? Starfield. Like, that's something that people don't realize, is that like once the Game of the Year awards are given out, Nobody's talking about these games anymore. You do realize that that applies to Tears of the Kingdom 2, as well as any other video game, Nintendo or otherwise. Right, Harmon? They're not remembered, they're not talked about, and if anything, people kind of look back uh, critically towards a lot of past Game of the Year contenders. You know, you have stuff like Dragon Age Inquisition, you have, uh, you know, Sekiro, you have, like, all of these games that have come out and just been completely, completely forgotten. Right. There is no there is no defending their current state of the industry. Please, Cody, project harder, bro. And um, what people don't realize is that the Game of the Year awards is meaningless. Holy shit. He actually admitted that the Game of the Year award is meaningless. So then, Harmon, my friend, why do you make these videos whining about Tears of the Kingdom potentially not getting Game of the Year? Also, Game of the Year isn't just meaningless, but it needs to stop, I think, because guess what? All it does is give game developers a reason to re-release the game at a higher price later on down the line. Maybe with a few pieces of DLC, and that's all the Game of the Year award does. Like, the only reason we, uh, the only reason people talk about this at all is that it gives their, like, really, really terrible games more credibility, right? Like, it's the only reason that anybody talks about, like, most of these games, you know, more than, like, a couple of months after launch, right? But with something like Tears of the Kingdom, it transcends all of that, right? Tears of the Kingdom is going to be talked about and played years after the fact, 
right? You know, just like Breath of the Wild has been. And, like, that, that has been, like, the big cope campaign since this game came out is that, like, oh, nobody, nobody's talking about Tears of the Kingdom. Nobody cares about this game. Like, my kid isn't playing this game religiously after beating it. But, like, they don't really realize that this game, like, is extremely successful that this game has maintained a dedicated audience and that more and more people are going to discover it over time to the point where like it is going to be considered one of the best games ever made in spite of the narrative around it right any chance you're going to tell us what the narrative around tears of the kingdom might be Harmon? or are you just gonna say oh you're just downplaying it because it's Nintendo, like you always do. Like, you can, like, clog your ears and close your eyes and just ignore reality all you want. But this game is being talked about. This game is being played. This game is being enjoyed. As are a lot of the games you like to crap all over, Harmon. You know, games like Skyrim, Elden Ring, Baldur's Gate 3, etc., etc., so on and so forth. Funny how it only seems to happen when it's in Nintendo's favor in your eyes. Far more than stuff like Baldur's Gate 3 or Starfield or Armored Core 6. But all anybody can talk about is, like, what game is going to possibly defeat Zelda for Game of the Year contender. Like, they're not acknowledging that. First of all, that Zelda is Game of the Year. And what makes you think you get to decide something like that, Cody? Didn't you just say it was pointless, the Game of the Year award? Like, in and of itself. But secondly, that, like, Tears of the Kingdom is the sort of title that transcends this year right? This is going to be a game that is played and enjoyed for a very long time, and most people right now are refusing to admit it. You mean just like how you refuse to admit that Elden Ring transcends last year? What about Skyrim? Skyrim won Game of the Year over a decade ago, and it's still being played to this day, as well as modded. Baldur's Gate 3, as I understand it, has really good review scores, and it's already got more players than Tears of the Kingdom, I presume. I don't know, I really don't care about Tears of the Kingdom all that much, or whether it wins Game of the Year or not. What I want to know is, why do you get so hung up about Tears of the Kingdom winning it, unless it doesn't, and then you have the gall to go and say that the Game of the Year award doesn't matter, which, let's be real, it doesn't, and now you're back to saying that it does, and even worse than that, you had to make me sit through six minutes of your inane drivel just to get to your point, which you also completely destroyed yourself. Man, this guy's stupidity is unreal, man. Like, does he ever watch these videos back before he uploads them to YouTube, do you think? Anyways, that's it for this video, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye for now!